Hey everyone, how's it going? I promised that I would do a Q&A at the end of August, so let's ace some Qs. Uh, how do you get an audience filled with thoughtful and awesome folks while eschewing the awful people that are pretty much everywhere in the community of gamers? I don't know. Luck, I think. Uh, I also like to think that I've, I've become a pretty decent person over time, and I comport myself to the standards of being decent and respectful and positive. Uh, and I do ban the couple of rare, seedy, shitty elements when I see them. But I don't really need to do that that often. So yeah, I think it's it's partially just luck. And encouraging people to be decent to one another. And not tolerating trash fire people hanging out and driving away good folks while attracting other toxic people. Like, I will actively tell people to stay away and unsub if they are toxic. Uh, if they can't respect people. If they're willfully ignorant and not willing to learn or grow. Yeah, they. they I have no tolerance for that. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm just really lucky to have a community who I can sincerely say and not like just saying a pandering oh y'all are the best uh no i can sincerely uh, sincerely say that it's so nice to interact uh with this community that i've cultivated um i'm i'm really lucky do you have planned or would you consider doing a let's play of final fantasy 10 and or 10 2 um I think 10 is all right. I certainly don't love it. Like, I love 6, 8, and 9, so I'd have to say that 9 is probably going to be the last FFLP. Maybe Tactics? Uh, I've never actually finished Tactics, and I plan to this year, so if I find out that I really adore Tactics, maybe that one in the future, but I, I don't know. To 10, and especially 10 too, though, which I think is trash. Um, no. I can't sustain an LP for an RPG that long if I don't have, like, gushing enthusiasm for it. Do you have any siblings? Uh, I come from a family of 11 kids. Holy shit! Uh, that's the question to ask her, not me, by the way. Uh, yeah, I have a blood sister along with a stepbrother and stepsister, all older than me. Okay, so the question I have for you is, what is your favorite weapon in all video games that you've played based on aesthetic and feel? Uh, um, God. Okay, so questions like this are really hard to answer because they're so broad. Uh, the more specific they are, the better, because... There's so many options to sift through my head. Uh, my mind is going straight to like Devil May Cry 3 and 4 and Bayonetta and Bloodborne. But man, like the Whirligig Saw in Bloodborne is extremely on brand for me as a person. <laughs> um, uh, Nevin from DMC3, most of Dante's weapons from DMC4. Ah, uh, the Kusarigama and the Spear and Neo. The Whip or, like, pretty much anything from Bayonetta 2. Shiraba from Bayo 1. Uh, can I pick Soul Calibur characters? Because they're basically just, like, walking weapons with legs, right? Because if so, Killick is my boy. Killick is my boy. And by extension, Killick is just a big staff boy. Uh, God, this is the hardest question. Is Mega Man X? Like, the entire series has so many? Holy shit. How- I- I can't just pick one from Mega Man X. Like, Wire Sponge's weapon is the coolest shit, just because it gives you so much mobility. Uh, aesthetically, if you're not judging by- by game feel or anything else, World of Warcraft has so many. And it has, like, a whole mechanic based around transmogging. And just playing Barbie dress up with your gear. Oh, there are too many. There are way too many. Ah, I'm just gonna go on listing different things forever as they come to mind. I'm not even getting into like the very good guns from different shooters. Like the 
paint roller in Splatoon, which is not a gun, but still, it's in a shooter. Uh, the railgun in Doom, which I'm LPing right now, the lightning gun in Quake 3 and Quake Live. Bunch of different TF2 weapons. So many of the guns from Area 51, which is like my favorite PS2 shooter. Uh, so many from Aliens vs. Predator 2, the old Sierra. Uh, PC first-person shooter, which is like my favorite FPS of all time. Oh, especially that loud, thunderous sniper rifle. Oh my god, there are so many good ones. Uh, the Magnum and everything else from Resistance 3. This is not a question that I can answer in a good way, in a succinct way. Do you have a favorite fighting game of all time? Uh, Killer Instinct, I think, has taken the crown away from Third Strike, which was my old answer to that question. Uh, but those will always be one and two on the list, no matter what. If you've ever wondered why I gush over parries, that love affair started with uh, the arcade and the Dreamcast versions of uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. And then KI is KI. Like, y'all know about how much I love KI, I think. There are lots of videos that kind of explain that on the channel. Will you consider a Let's Play of Severance Blade of Darkness? I have no idea what that is. So... Yes and no? I would consider it, but not until I actually know if I like it or not. I don't know what that is. What are your thoughts on The Last Jedi? Oh, fun. Uh, I loved it. I really liked that movie a lot. Uh, I'd go so far as to say that it's the only Star Wars movie that I give even a single shit about. Uh, Empire was alright. I think The Last Jedi, though, has interesting characterizations. I think it's got uh, an interesting narrative arc and some really, really strong visuals and visual storytelling. Um, it's, it's great. 100% great. It is a tremendously underrated movie. Uh, like, the new trilogy has, at bare minimum, been entertaining. I don't think, um, what was it called? The Force Awakens. I don't think it was doing anything particularly groundbreaking, but, like, at the bare minimum, it kept me entertained for a few hours. So it's okay. Last Jedi actually seems to have, like, a theme and a tone that I give a shit about, though. Whereas I think the original trilogy is very boring, aside from the highlights of Empire. Uh, and the prequels are a known quantity of, of trash. So, yeah, Last Jedi is great. It is, I would go so far as to say, the only really good Star Wars movie. I really enjoyed your Warhammer, your Warhammer 40k Space Marine playthrough, I would like to know if you would consider playing any of the other 40k games. I think you would... I think you... would... I guess do a killer Dawn of War Let's Play. Uh, I actually quite enjoy the Dawn of War games. I haven't played them in a while, but I remember really liking them. I haven't played the new one, but 1 and 2 were fun. Uh, I don't love them or even know enough about Warhammer to sustain a lengthy uh, RTS LP for them, though. Like, it took me this long to build up to doing Warcraft 3, just earlier this year, and that's my favorite game ever. Not just my favorite RTS game, but that's my favorite game of all time. I don't know if I can really do another RTS Let's Play for uh, a series that I just think is good. Uh, I don't know too much about any of the other 40k games either. I'd love to at least check out some good ones on my own time, though. Like, Space Hulk Deathwing, I've had my eye on it. I probably wouldn't LP it, but I want to check it out. Do you like Gears of War? If so, would you ever consider playing them on your channel? Uh, yeah, very much so, actually. I'm a really big fan of the feel and the aesthetic of Gears. Uh, and it's one of those, like, I, I could go for all of Gears 1, 2, and 3. And that could start pretty much any time that I want. Uh, I have no specific plans, though. 
will you be at MAGFest this year? I hope so. MAGFest is a really cool con. I've only gotten to go to it once, uh, but I would love to go again. That arcade room is something else. It's, you can't even call it an arcade room. It's like a fraction of the entire con, like a large fraction. It's an arcade ballroom. It's so good. Plus, MAGFest is like a 24-7 a party. It's great. People will just set up instruments or set up, you know, whatever in the hallway. Dance parties will break out in hallways or elevators or whatever. MAGFest is a really good time, so I hope I can go in 2019. I'd like to ask if you were planning on writing a novel or short story at some point. I remember you sharing a small descriptor with a few people on a live stream, and I thought it was really good. Well, first off, thank you! I don't remember what I shared, but I do write short stories and poems for myself all the time. Uh, some of my poetry I've started submitting to magazines and various places. I don't know if or when any of it's going to be published yet. Uh, I also did a short choose your own uh, adventure style story that you can check out on the channel. It's called Sleep Tight. I wrote it and put it all together last year for Halloween and I'm quite proud of it. As far as publishing a short story or a novel, um, yeah, eventually, absolutely. Uh, specifically, I have a novel that I wrote a few years ago that I really like for National Novel Writing Month, uh, NaNoWriMo. It's a horror story because of course it is. Again, extremely on brand for me. Uh, but I want to clean it up a little bit and, and pitch it around for publication. I'd really like to get it published by uh, this time next year. Yeah, I'm very interested in getting more of my poetry and my fiction out there, though. Hi, I've heard you talk about Lucha Underground before. Do you follow any other wrestling promotions? Um, yes, but not consistently. Like, I'll watch big New Japan shows uh, here and there. Like, I will catch Wrestle Kingdom every year. Usually, like, G1 Climax highlights here and there. And then every NXT TakeOver. But I don't watch the weekly show. But with Lucha Underground, I will watch every episode. It's my very, very specific... Um... Supernatural telenovela... Lucha Libre Jam. It's so good. Do you have a favorite Lovecraft story? Uh, yes, Call of Cthulhu. I have that entire opening paragraph memorized. I love it so much. And I love it mainly because of the, the little flourishes and the style. Like, it's very... Specifically, I think the best of Lovecraft's prose. And I've always had a thing for that kind of flowery prose. Edgar Allan Poe is also a big influence on me, too, uh, because he has a similar style, like that elaborate, articulate series of descriptors, this really, really elaborate imagery, and it just goes on and on. I think it's so nice. Uh, and the analogy that I've always given is that some people arrange flowers simply because a bouquet looks really nice to them on its own merits. And I think a sentence can be like that, like a beautiful arrangement of flowers. Um, I don't think purple prose is a dirty word. Uh, it, it can definitely fall flat on its face. And it isn't always appropriate to go so elaborate. Uh, and of course, there's something to be said for brevity, but man, I love like a long, winding, beautiful, flowery sentence when it's done right. It's one of my favorite things about Lovecraft's writing, to be honest. When are we getting the rest of the God of War games? Uh, one to three I might do eventually. Uh, although after the new one, it feels like it'd be hard to go back to the old Kratos, even though I love those games. But Ascension and the PSP games, uh, they're never gonna happen. Any other Silent Hill LPs coming? Maybe? Maybe. All that's left are the games that I hate, so... Eh, eh, I don't wanna... 
Okay, so first off, Soulsborn, do you have a top 10 bosses in that series? Again, I think this is really, really broad and hard to answer. There's nearly, what, 100 bosses to choose from? That's such a tough question. Oh my god. Uh, Orphan of Cause, Lady Maria... Jumped to mind immediately from Bloodborne, Gurman... Uh, Gale in DS3, Manus... False King in Des, Flame Lurker, Beggy and Smalls, Gascoin, uh, Sin in Dark Souls 2. I'm, I'm, I don't know if that was 10. I'm going with those. Like, it, it, that's so hard. Second, would you want another Bloodborne game? Huh. I've said this before, uh, but to be honest, I wouldn't turn my nose up at it, but honestly, no. Um, I want another game like Bloodborne. I still want more like it. Or Dark Souls, but I, I think that... Uh, Bloodborne tells a pretty complete story. I think it did what it needed to do, and I had a complete, satisfying, uh, great experience. And I don't need a sequel to it. I don't need more of exactly that. I want more things that play kind of similarly, that follow the same monster design principles that made me fall in love with Bloodborne's monsters. I want the same approach to, like, archaeologically digging out the lore, like, that archaeological storytelling and world building. I don't need a sequel, though. I really don't. I think it was a good thing. I think it was enough. Uh, and that might change, like... Years down the road, I might just crave more of that world, but... Right now, I especially don't want another Souls or Bloodborne game anytime soon. Like, I'm happy Sekiro is its own thing, and it's coming out next year. Because we had what? We had Demon Souls in 2009, we had Dark Souls in 2011. And then all of a sudden, we had Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, and DS3 back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. In 2014, 2015, and 2016, plus all the staggered DLC releases for all those. Uh, and it's... I think it's too much of a good thing. Like, I like all of that. I like all that DLC. But I think it's too much of a good thing, and I'm glad that Sekiro is taking a few years after... Uh, DS3 came out and after the last DLC for DS3. Glad Sekiro is taking a few years out. And that it's not another Dark Souls or Bloodborne sequel. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with those, at the very least, resting for a bit. And third, aside from Naginata's, what are you most wanting in Neo 2? I can't even think of anything else. Uh, Naginata's are number one so distantly that I can't even think of another weapon type that I want added to Neo 2. Aside from it. Uh, ring blades are an actual thing, right? Are they? I don't know. Uh, they weren't a thing in feudal Japan, were they? No, it's Naginatas. It's just Naginatas. Uh, and that was our final question. We got some really good ones. Uh, I would love to do this again sometime, so I will leave that email address that we use for this Q&A. And every now and then, I'll just pop in there and gather them all and do another Q&A. I'm not going to set a time for it, but if you have any questions you want to submit, uh, go for it. I also tend to just be really active in the comments, so... Eh, this was fun. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.